This is the start of a multi-week section on the cardiovascular system. There are several chapters in your book on the system. So first I wanna start with what is the cardiovascular system? What components make it up? You may think primarily of heart. Well, that's an important one. We've got the heart. It's a muscular pump that literally is the driving force, creates the force to pump blood throughout the blood vessels. I just said the other two as well, right? So these three things here are all the three different types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries that we'll come back to in a couple of weeks. Blood vessels are just the tubes, kind of like tubes that carry water to your house. Um, the difference is we do have to have transport across those tubes at time, times instead of like a faucet um, that turns on opening up the water when you wash your hands in a sink. Unlike that, um, these tubes are completely enclosed. This is called a closed circulatory system. Other animals, a lot of insects have open circulatory systems that kind of just leak out kind of like the faucet of a sink. So these closed tubes um, are closed, closed circulatory system, and that requires these capillaries to be able to transport fluids across their beds. So we'll come back to that, but that's the one caveat from them just being simple tubes. And then I already said this, the blood vessels, they're gonna carry blood. So the heart pumps blood throughout the blood vessels. And these three components need to work together to provide nutrients, transport wastes to and from around the body. In addition to that, so blood pressure has to be maintained. So we'll talk about blood pressure um, in order to transport all these nutrients and wastes. Um, and also fluid volume has to be maintained. So actual volume of fluid, not just blood pressure. So we'll come back to that as well. And lastly, this system is gonna interact with the respiratory system, of course, in gas exchange. So we'll do respiratory system after cardiovascular in terms of how we get gases to and from um, the, the blood. So we're gonna start, actually, start with the blood. Um, we, the blood's job is to transport cells and dissolve materials throughout the body. And this is important for homeostasis, right? So I want you to do a learning check first and name the least four things you can that are transported by the cardiovascular system, so via the blood. Okay, I'm gonna go over this in this table. This is one way to break down transport in the cardiovascular system. Um, this is a table that kind of makes sense to me for breaking down transport for things that go into the body. Oh my gosh, I did it again. Okay, we'll just do it with this. Things that go into the body from outside, things that are just transported within the body, and then things that are going out of the body. So it's broken down by those three sections. And then um, each of these has where that thing is going from and to. Two, you'll notice, is often all cells. Um, for things that are going out of the body, from is all cells. So oxygen goes from the lungs to all cells. So these two are things that are coming into the body from outside. Blood needs to transport those around. These are things that are transported within the body. Hormones, um, immune cells, clotting factors, and stored nutrients. And then these are things that are transported out of the body that we need our blood and our cardiovascular system to be able to do that. Carbon dioxide, heat, and waste. Waste actually could be more than just from the kidney. Um, so the key point is here that blood transports a wide variety of substances, like a wide variety, right? Um, everything from tiny little oxygen, actually ions too, right? Um, H, hydrogen ions, potassium, salt, um, all the way up to big, big hormones, um, immune cells, whole cells, and heat, which is a different thing. And in all of these cases, though, the goal is to maintain homeostasis. So over here, I've got the variable that's maintained for each of these scenarios. So transport of all these components is necessary for maintaining homeostasis. And you could, you know, so when we draw a feedback loop, we might start with a disruption in one of these variables here that then is going to cause um, 
a change in the delivery of that substance as part of the response. We don't always draw like blood vessels, um, blood carrying something as part of a response, but it's always going to be often going to be often going to be part of a response. It's kind of assumed, right? Like glucose mobilization that's in the blood. Um, this table that I've drawn for you here, this is not the kind of thing I want you just to copy down and like memorize. From I made this for myself to help me put these things together, think about the role of the cardiovascular system in maintaining homeostasis and delivering things. So if you make something similar, I want you to make one that works for you. You don't have to write down a table, you don't have to make one. Um, but if you do, I want it to be something that is helps you learn. Maybe writing down a similar table will help you learn. Okay. The learning check, what are the three components of the cardiovascular system? I think you can do that without me answering. All right, so what we've done so far for this intro video is describe the major functions of each component of the cardiovascular system. There's your answers. Um, and some of these terms I use, this is probably a little bit less important. We'll come back to those tubes, the blood vessels later, um, the idea that they're enclosed completely. Um, transport, really big idea. And of course, we're maintaining homeostasis. So this week, um, I'll touch upon many aspects of blood is what we'll start with. And I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail in some of the sections. It's going to be a little bit variable. So we're going to start talking about fluid compartments, what how blood fits in with the different compartments of fluid in your body, um, the structures and functions of blood, plasma, um, the cells and other things that are in blood that you've already actually seen in lab some. Um, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail on those things. So a little more detail on red blood cells and hemoglobin, a little bit more detail on some of the white blood cells, not comprehensive. Um, and then we'll talk about platelets and um, hemostasis, blood clotting and stopping bleeding. So that's going to be this week.